Alright, and hello and welcome to the first episode of Trains with Chris from the channel I Saw It Online. And today I'm working on one of my O gauge F units. It is the Texas Special 210. This one is the powered unit, and it also has another one that is a dummy unit. And today we're going to be taking this dummy unit and we're going to be swapping the frame on it to one that has power on it because what's the point of having three F units if one has power one doesn't and my other Texas Special over there has power too so I said why not just have three so, I went on eBay and bought something. And I will bring you guys right back when I have this all unwrapped. Alright, and we're back and I have it all unwrapped. This is another F3 Alco frame unit. It has the power and it also has a switcher. You can flip the switch one way or the other way and it'll either go forward constantly or it'll forward neutral and then go backwards and it also has a light up here first the undercarriage looks a little dirty those pickups look a little crusty but all in all a very nice looking frame, a little bit of rust on the motor E unit and then we have the headlight up here and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little cleaning on this motor, I'll show you how to take the contacts out and clean the different parts of the motor and then we'll come over here and we'll put it on a little test track and see if it runs. Looks like we're going to need a flathead. That camera fell over. All right, there we go. Actually, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on the test track, see what it does. And supplying power to the test track is an old AMC Flyer Transformer. We'll get into why I like using old transformers instead of more expensive ones later. Alright, we will be taking bets now to whether or not she even moves. Oh wow! She actually moved. And she stopped. So, she does have life, but from the looks of it, how I went forward, then backwards and forward, she needs a nice good cleaning to run nice and smooth. Alright, we're back on the workbench, and we're going to get to work cleaning all the contacts and stuff in the motor. Work on cleaning those rollers right there for the negative pickup, and for the power 
over here on the wheels. And you take these two screws right here out and the whole unit should just pop right off. There's one screw. Now I'll get this other screw. Now we'll move this wire out of the way. Gently pull up on the top of the motor. Wiggling it back and forth. And there we are. Ooh. And as you can see, the contacts for the brushes on the motor, very, very dirty. So now, we'll take some isopropyl alcohol. Put in a little bowl here. We'll put the contacts that contact the motor into the bowl over here. We'll let those sit for just a little bit. And I need to go get some toothpicks to start cleaning the motor. Be right back. Alright, I'm back. Got my toothpicks. Now we're just going to take and dunk it in the alcohol. And we just start scrubbing. And as you can see, all that smush, smush and stuff and built up is coming right off the motor. That's how it should be. That tells me that this unit didn't just sit around and not get played with. It tells me she got driven, which is a good thing. Because if you have a Lionel train set, you should just play with it. Keep cleaning everything off. Now you don't have to get this surgically clean, but clean enough that it'll make good contact for the power to get to the mower and down to the wheels to propel you forward. Now, my table here has a old towel that I use to wipe stuff on. If you're going to have a workbench, suggest putting a towel on it. That way you can just wipe stuff on here when you're done with it and it gets super dirty, wad it up, throw it away. For you married guys out there, you might want to be uh, cautious doing it this way. You know, wifey might not like that. But for a single guy like me, it works fine. Now we're going to take some alcohol and clean the tip of this nice and clean. Now if you notice it's not getting super clean, we'll get to that in just a second. Show you what I use to get those brushes clean. Also guys, while you're sitting here watching me work on this train, if you would, take a moment to go down in the comments and post what you would like to see on this series of videos and whether or not you like it. And if you do, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Got the 
those pretty clean. You take an eraser like this and you just start scrubbing tip. Or you can use sandpaper, whatever you like. Just trying to. Actually, I might use a little. Got a small fingernail file here. You can use that and scrub that really good. Ooh. As you can see, a bunch of stuff is coming off. There we go, nice and flat and ready to be used. We'll do the same on this one. Just sand it down a little bit till it's flat. We'll rub it with the eraser. All right, that looks clean. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this part of the motor, the top part, there's a little hole right there, that little shaft right there will slide right up into there. Shouldn't have to force any of this, should just should slide right back into place. Now, when you go to put these brushes back in, you gotta make sure to put that slit right in line with those little springs right there. That's what holds it and keeps it from spinning around. So what I do is I take a flathead screwdriver, try and get down in there, Pry up, move that over to the side, make sure you put this contact in the right way up, and you just kind of slip her down in there, and we'll do the same on the other side. Find where our spring is, oh come on, there she is, and we'll do the same thing, drop it down in there. Well, maybe. There we go. Whoop. Now, as you can see in here, I'm on camera. Work with me. Well, there we go. As you can see, they're not quite lined up. So we'll take our flathead and we'll. Give them a little turn. There we are. There's one. Turn that one. Get in there. There's the other one. And as you can tell, come on, camera. As you can tell, they're perfectly lined up now. Now all we got to do is put our screws back in. one. Now with this one if you notice there was a I think this is a ground contact and it has a special screw that has a little plastic isolator. Oh, 
Boom, boom, boom. And there we go. And we just snug this up. Click, click. Click, click. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the WD-40. I'm going to squirt a little bit right down on this pad right here. This is oil. And then I'm going to take some. This E unit may not. Well, I'll take some onto the E unit. I'll have to and make sure that the E unit is free moving, which it feels like it is, so it should be fine. And I'll also take some and I'll take our file again and I'll brighten up these wheels right here. Just like that, so they make good contact. And these two. There we go. Work that all back and forth so she runs nice and smooth. That's the key with any train. Running smooth. Now we'll work on the wheels and the negative pickups. The springs are nice and good. Actually, I'll break out the big sanding block I have to do the wheels, make it a lot easier. You don't have to get this 100% clean, but just enough to make good contact on the track. Because if you ain't got no power, you ain't going nowhere. Now we'll clean these negative ones up a little bit. Negative ones are always a little tricky. Looks good. Do this side now. If there's any model railroading guys watching me do this, if I'm doing something wrong, post it down in the comments. Alrighty, we've got that cleaned. Give a little spritz of the oil on these here wheels.
and you're probably wondering why am I using WD-40 and not some special train model lubricant well because WD-40 is water dispersant meaning doesn't conduct electricity put a little on these gears here I will roll everything by hand and that feels good now this E unit notice how it went back and forth and then forward that means it was in the E unit mode if you switch it to this one to where it's not touching this little contact here it'll go straight forward no reverse so now take your back to the test track see what it does now going forward first all right guys we're back on the test track we're gonna see if she goes and here we go and look at that Whoop. looks like we found a little dead spot in the track bring her back here and watch when I just barely turn the transformer on she just takes right off give it a little bit of the sauce and around she goes Let's try out that E unit. All right, come over here, turn that switch to that. Now the E unit should start working. First, it'll go backwards. It looks like we stop. Oh, there we go. Now we're going forward. Go forward for a little bit here. We'll stop. Now we're going to go backwards for a bit. Now, now we'll go forward again. We'll stop. Give it a little throttle, and back we go. Whoop. Start going on her own there for a second. Alrighty. Guys and girls, looks like She's a runner. Oh, let me put a bulb up here in the light. See if that works. Now for a light, I have this LED bulb. I like using LEDs. Cheaper and easier is you just push it in. Give it a quarter turn. And there it is. We'll put it on the test track. See what it does. Put her back in. regular mode forward mode for testing the LED and to put the car back on the track you make sure you got those two wheels on the outside rail and the middle contacts on that center rail just Just like that. All right. Plug our power back in. Let's see if the light comes on. 
Looks like she's trying to come on. She might not be making the best contact. I have to run it for a little bit to get it up there, but as you can probably tell on the video, she works. All in all, I am very pleased with my purchase. Now I'm going to take body off of this one. It takes one Phillips screw and just unhinges from there. That Phillips screw will get stuck in there. She'll get hinged on there. And we should have a new powered F unit in the barn. Take this screw out real fast. There's my Phillips. Get out of there. And this is a dummy unit. Doesn't have anything inside. Now some dummy units they might have a horn or even a light, but this one doesn't even have that. Right, and we're back. Sorry about that. Had an interruption from my older brother, Shane, who is the host of trains with Shane you should go check his channel out very good in scale size oh that reminds me most of you new people who have probably never seen the Lion L train are asking well, what size is that this is considered O gauge there are many different scales of train but this is my preferred one so now we'll take we gotta make sure we have this little hook this little opening here will come up through here for this hook right here. And bingo! She just slid right on like it was meant to be. Now we'll just stick our screw back on. Magnet! Stick her back on there, and there we go. A new powered F3 Lionel train. As you can see, this one has had a bit of drops in its life and has lost part of it. Only thing I don't like is we may have lost the front coupler for this particular one, but. That's okay. It'll be at the head of the train now. It'll be its own train, so it doesn't need it. Well, now let's go put the completed train on the test track. It's tricky getting these on here. Oh, not on there. Alright. Alright, we're on there. Make sure our switcher works. Throw the switch. See if she moves. 
As you can see, she goes forward. And she goes backward. Whoop, whoop. She goes forwards. And we go backwards. Now, if there's one thing I can note with running any E unit from this era of train, which is from post war, so 1950s, this particular E unit, you have to turn this throttle over here twice. And you're going to listen for a certain buzz noise. Buzz. And the train will go backwards. That buzz noise is the solenoid turning the train from forward to backwards. And away we go. Buzz. And, whoop. And backwards. Alrighty. Well, I guess this will conclude the first video of Trains with Chris. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please come on back because there's probably going to be more. Have a great day.